Yo, what up? In the next 15 minutes or so, you're gonna learn how to implement analytics into your Next.js deployed project. Now, whether that be React or another framework, it doesn't really matter. There are some things you need to pay attention to if it's not React, and I'm gonna mention that in this video. It's gonna be great. You're gonna see how many people come to your website, where they go to, um, which browsers they're using, lots of interesting stuff that doesn't require cookies. That's why it's especially cool. The setup is really easy. So I say we dive right into it, take a look at how to integrate analytics. Okay, so here we are in the actual analytics of the uh, startup that we're building together. So that would be Wordful. And um, this is the Vercel kind of, you know, I guess you could call it a, uh, in quotation marks, back end, where we can see how many visitors the page gets. And the, the Vercel analytics that we want to take a look at in this video are quite privacy friendly. Um, they don't utilize cookies, they just utilize whatever you know the server sends and how many times it serves um, a specific route, for example. Um, so you can see the routes that people navigate to, where they come from and stuff. Um, so it's really handy. You can see the countries where they're coming from, the operating systems and the browsers, but you don't get any information that is, you know, cookie based. So you don't get any information on where they clicked, what they clicked, um, how long they stayed on the site. You don't get those um, kinds of information, but I think this is um, enough to get a basic grasp of how your website is doing. And um, as you can see here, um, we get the top routes and for example, the a private slash my secret key is one that I've typed in right here. Maybe you can see it in the URL bar up there, private slash my secret key. And the reason I typed that in is because I also want to show you how you can exclude certain routes um, from the analytics, because that is very much possible in the Vercel analytics. Now, I've already done the analytics in this project right here. So how about we go to the desktop and try to integrate it for the um, backend, for example. So for a different um, project, so that would be your use case. You want to implement it into a new project. So we can say close all. We don't need any of that. And now let's go into our app, um, the pages one. And as you can see, this one is already populated a bit, but you can follow along just fine in a completely new Next.js um, project. It doesn't matter what is here. Um, and if you're following along in Next.js 13, this would not be the uh, underscore app, but the main layout that you want to navigate to. Okay, and now that we are here, we can start getting um, st we can start getting started with the analytics. Um, and the way we do that is by navigating to our terminal, and we are gonna install the adversel slash analytics package because this package makes it insanely easy to get started with the analytics. So let me check if I'm using, uh, okay, for this project, I'm using yarn. So I'm going to say yarn add and then this package. But if you're follow along, following along without yarn, um, you could just say, and I maybe can zoom in a bit here. You could say npm install uh, and then the package. It doesn't really matter. But since I'm using yarn, um, I'm going to do this. That is going to put the adverse cell slash analytics into our package.json. And by the way, this is a brand new NPM package. As you can see, um, I'm recording this video on the, uh, well, I can on the 11th. Um, that is very close to when it's going to come out. And the downloads have only started um, about on the 26th of November. So like uh, two weeks ago, approximately. So it's a very new package, but it's already gotten like 40,000 downloads a week. So people actually like it. And I totally understand why, because it makes um, the analytics just really easy. Okay, let me open the uh, documentation here on my left so I don't forget which steps I wanted to mention in this video. And the first thing we're going to do is implement the analytics into our app, or if you're following along in Next.js 13, the main layout. The way we can do that is by having the fragments and then just rendering the an uh, analytics right here. And there is no auto import, but we can just say import. And then we want to import the analytics. Um, now I'm not sure if that's a default analytics from adverse cell, oops, adverse cell slash analytics. Okay, and that is um, a default export. Okay, um, so we can mention it here. JSX element type analytics does not have any construct or call signatures. Uh, well, okay, we can just take a look at how we did it in this project. 
hold up one second so we can go to our app we are already here okay so the wait oh okay so for cell analytics slash react that's where we want to import it from so slash react and then it is not a default export but a named export and that way we can get the analytics and this is all you have to do how crazy is that so this is literally all you have to change in the code then you'd save that push that up to your um, github repository and then um, the Vercel deployment where you've deployed your project will um, will know that you've implemented the analytics and it will actually start working after you redeploy your project. So that is crazy. The reason I'm not doing it at this point is because I'm using the Vercel free plan at the moment and it only allows you to have analytics in one project. So that's why I cannot do this for a second one. Um, but just redeploy your project after pushing the code up to your GitHub repo and you will be golden. Okay, and now um, if I go to the documentation, there is an article about redacting sensitive data. And that is essentially what I wanted to show you earlier. So when we go to our audience, maybe we, we don't want the uh, private slash my secret key to show up in the analytics. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can go to the analytics right here, press control spacebar, at least that's what it is for me. Um, and we can see there are four options. There's mode, key, debug, and before send. And the way we uh, handle private data is with the before send. That receives an event as the first argument. And uh, in here we can, for example, say um, if e dot, and you'll see it has two properties, the URL and the type. And we want to go for the URL. So if the URL, um, if URL includes private, um, then don't um, proce proceed with analytics. So we want to exclude it. So e.url, and this is a regular string, so we can um, just do regular string methods with it. So we can say the includes, and in here we could say uh, in quotations private, and if, if, it doesn't include priv uh, if it does include private, so if this is truthy, then we want to return null. And null means um, we are not going to pass it to the analytics. And else, if it doesn't include private, then we're just going to return the regular event, which will then be propagated to the analytics and be shown in our Vercel dashboard right here. Now, we can also remove something from the parameters. Um, so, for example, we could say that the uh, const URL is going to be equal to new, and then we're going to have an URL creator right here and that is going to be e.url. So essentially we're copying it into this constant. And for that we can say url.searchparams, which is an, a method we get on the URL. Um, and then we can say dot .delete. Um, so this is a url search params type, and that has a method called delete. And then we can say what we want to delete. So for example, we can delete the secret. So if the url was, you know, slash I don't know, secret is equal to my secret, then we would exclude that from the URL. So uh, just, you know, ensuring the privacy of the people that we uh, navigate or, or that do navigate to a website. Um, so it doesn't show up in the um, back end and else we can return an object that has the, uh, the event that we spread in and then also as the a URL property, we can pass the URL dot to, oops, not to JSON, but to string. So we are essentially replacing the URL. Um, so we, we are copying the entire event first, then we are deleting the secret and then replacing the URL with the one that doesn't include the secret. And this is gonna get passed to the analytics. So in the analytics, the event is gonna show up without the secret because we deleted it first. Now you might also be asking, but Josh, if someone doesn't consent, right? Um, can we disable the analytics entirely for certain people? And the answer is yes, we can. Um, how do we do that? Well by using local storage or you could also use cookies or uh, whatever you prefer um so for example if local storage we can say dot get item so if this item exists that is called for example Vercel analytics uh, so va dash disabled um or disabled doesn't matter um it, it doesn't matter what you name this you can name this whatever you want as long as you set the item that has the same name 
and if this um, variable exists in the local storage, then we're going to return, as I said earlier, we're going to return null if we don't want to pass to the analytics, and else we can just return 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 the um, event. So if we were to navigate to the browser and then go to local storage, so inspect application and then local storage, as you can see, the Wordful AI website stores nothing in local storage. Um, but if we um, save a value called um, VA disabled right here in the local storage, if that exists, then we're not going to pass it to the um, analytics. So essentially, we are disabling the analytics for this exact user because this exact user has the VA disabled in their local storage or they don't, then we analyze normally. And that's pretty much most of the magic there is to Vercel Analytics. It's beautifully simple. Now, uh, one small option you have is the debug, and this is a Boolean. Uh, so you could say debug is false. And um, why would you do that? Well, because in development mode, so the um, node underscore ENV, and well, this is not JavaScript, but um, the node ENV that gets uh, exposed to Next.js that we can normally work with, so by saying process.env.nodeenv, which is either production or it is development. And if it's in development, then the analytics will um, console log events by default to the console. Maybe you don't want that though, because it does clog up the console. And in that case, you could pass debug false um, or debug true if you do want the um, analytics events logged if you are in development mode. Now, they will never do that if you are in production mode, right? So if you deployed your project to Vercel, it's in production, then it will never log that to the console anyways. This is just for local um, development. And that's all there is to say, man. I mean, it's as easy as that. You can literally just paste the analytics and here configure a couple of options, uh, what you want and what you don't want in the analytics and then have working analytics um, without, you know, um, exposing uh, like uh, cookies to the user, right? So. As you can see here, this website uses the Vercel analytics, but if we go to application and cookies, we see there are no cookies. Um, unlike if you were using something like Google Analytics, where you want a cookie consent banner and ask for consent. So may I track where you click and how long you stay on the website, all of that. Now these um, analytics that we get from Vercel, and I keep dragging it to the, to the left and right here, um, that we get from Vercel, uh, right here, we can get these from the server, right? So how many times does this page get served? How many times do these page, pages get served? Uh, like what are the uh, user agents, uh, the operating systems, which country are they from? Uh, and how many visitors we have and how many page views uh, we get in total. So that's really handy. And we also get the web vitals. Um, now we don't get these from these Vercel analytics, but you can also enable them in Vercel for one project if you are on the free plan and for even more if you're on the paid plan. That's all I want to show you. I uh, really hope you have uh, fun with the analytics, get some insights into your um, Vercel projects, how many people check them out. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.